Hi, my name is Eric Bond and I am the spokesman and editor for the Texas Interlinear Biblical Project. What we like to do is get into the word of scripture and get the uh, translations corrected and get information out to the people. And with your kind indulgence today, I'm going to try to keep this uh, under 10 minutes and I'm going to read mostly uh, the study that I have prepared. The words the beast is used over 35 times to describe a particular individual. The use of the word ho in the Greek is the. It is the definitive indicator of one and only one stated individual. The words used are ho therion in the Greek which means the dangerous animal. We don't have to wonder who the dangerous animal of the world is. It is Satan playing the part of the leader of the whole world. This is the individual who has the mark. The mark, of course, is 666. The Bible states that no one without the mark can transact business, that is, that can neither buy nor sell. The world is made to transact business in the image of the beast. What does that mean? It looks and has the characteristics of the beast without being the beast de facto. It's the system that Satan operates in. He lies, he kills, and he steals. He's been doing it since the beginning of recorded time. The people are saying, who can make war with the beast? What is the concept of not being able to transact business nor make war with the beast? It is simply the one world government. It is where government and business is so thoroughly entwined as to make it impossible to operate out of the system. You cannot separate the dangerous animal from his system of operation. It is how he corrupts and rules over all the earth. Once more, I'll state this. You cannot separate the dangerous animal from his system. As Jesus put it, behold, I have foretold you all things. If Jesus has told us all things, we must be able to determine what exactly that system will be. What is the essence of the one world government? It is Babylon. Babylon is a thing that is in existence. It is a woman clad in scarlet and purple who rides the waters, which means all people, and note that it is said she lives deliciously on the backs of the people. Who else is living deliciously? Let's go to Revelation 18. Jesus is explaining this in code to us. Who is the king of Babylon? Satan. He always has been. Let's read from Revelation 18 and understand. To set the stage, this is after the seventh trumpet. Jesus has returned and rectified all things and destroyed the world of evil men. Chapter 18, verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously, here we go, with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise any more. Here it is. Buying and selling is the mark of the beast. It is in the mind and in the hand. Verse 12, the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of pearls and fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all thine wood and all manner vessels of ivory and all manner vessels of most precious wood and of brass and iron and marble and cinnamon and odors and ointments and frankincense and wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and chariots and slaves and the souls of men. Very important. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which are dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing and saying, Alas, alas, that great city! that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. For in one hour so great riches is come to naught, and every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? 
And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour is she made desolate. Okay. What is the one world system? It is the ability to cross borders and buy whatever you wish. So during the one world government, all will be able to buy and sell the items listed above. But wait a moment. I can buy all those items now. Can you? Let's check about it. How about gold, silver, precious stones, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, aromatic wood, ivory, wooden vessels, brass, iron, marble, cinnamon, odors, ointments, frankincense, wine, oil, flour, wheat, beasts, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves, and the souls of men. Where on earth are the souls of men sold, bought, and paid for? Ask yourself that question. If you can buy and sell these items, you are inhabiting the beast one world system right now. Now, if you look at scripture, it says the men will be cursed that both worship and have the mark in their minds and in their hands, not on their forehead. It is in your forehead the ability to buy whatever you wish from all corners of the earth is the one world mark of the beast you cannot separate Satan from his system from the beast it's all one thing in 1991 I was in meetings with a well-known corporation from Georgia who had gone into the credit scoring business Based on various models, everyone would be assigned a three-digit score identifying their credit worthiness. I asked the moderator of the meeting what exactly was the bottom threshold of credit worthiness and he told me the number is 666. In Revelation 13 verses 16 through 18, 666 isn't the number of a man, it is the number of men. Those words are arithmos Anthropos. There are numbers of men. Satan isn't sneaking up with a one world system. Why would he reinvent what he already has? He's simply not going to do it. If you can transact business in any of these items, it is the mark of the beast. And you will notice in Revelation 18, Jesus has squared the books. He has done away with the buying and selling of these items, and these men aren't the slightest bit repentant. They are rather quite concerned about their inability to make money anymore. Jesus has come back, and these men simply care about their business and how they have uh, lost their ability to transact business in gold and silver and precious stones and souls of men. Those days will be gone. They will be put to uh, uh, an end by the return of Jesus Christ at the seventh trumpet. Everyone knows this. I'm not going to quote the specific uh, uh, passages. You know exactly when Jesus comes back. What he does, he squares the books all at once. Once again, my name is Eric Bond. I am the spokesman for the Texas Interlinear Biblical Project. Uh, sincere, rational commentary is always welcome. You can email me if you wish for a copy of this study and many other studies that I have uh, done in the past. And I hope you have a great day. And thanks.